This is the announcement segment of Blind Android Users Podcast. Stay tuned to hear important information regarding the podcast, surveys, and the latest news. Let's turn to our announcements then. And Austin, we've got a couple of things just to briefly mention this week, haven't we, I think? Google pushed out a new QPR of Android 14 security patch of February for all the Pixel phones and it fixed 15 security flaws. It fixed some of the displays getting corrupted on some circumstances. A lot of stability and performance improvements, Wi-Fi stability and all those things. And then next week, it pushed out another st- uh, special update for Pixel 5a. Now, that is an old phone and Google still cares about it. It really makes very fantastic thing. But the special update fixed a very important problem where 5a devices would just enter a boot loop and would break so that fixed that there were a lot of slow and app stutters and ui stutters and it just improved the performance of 5a so some nice treats for the old phones and uh, some upr for the new pixels was the 5a the one they only released in the us and japan I think they did that. There was one of the A series, wasn't there? I'm pretty sure it was the 5A. Uh, so, yeah, that is a pretty niche update given the markets it was released in. But as you say, good they're caring for that. And uh, the the Nokia brand, after, a, I guess, a, a slow decline, might, might finally be on the way out, might it? Yeah, so HMD Global has said that it's not going to use the Nokia brand. It is going to launch phones according to the design of Nokia Lumia series, but the branding will be HMT Global. So Nokia released their phones and they were very popular. For those of you who don't know about it, I don't know how you will not know, but before Android and iOS would come, they were really popular. The Nokia 1011 and the the 111 and all the others, the Nokia 66000 was the first smartphone i should say that i have it was smart according to those times and they launched a killer phone to the ios but the downfall of nokia happened because the management did not think that nokia and especially iphone would be a threat to nokia and then nokia sold their division to microsoft where the microsoft mobile windows did not do any good so Nokia was not to be blamed there because the mobile windows and then they sold to HMD Global and then started the decline of Nokia. So right from iOS to Android, as iOS launched, slowly, slowly, Nokia's decline started. Does anyone want to like comment or refresh the listeners' memories on what was your first Nokia phone or whatever? Yeah, you mentioned a couple of iconic Nokia phones there, the 6600. It, it wasn't my first one uh, because I was in, I, I was living in Germany when Torx at the time, that was a screen reader for, for Symbian. Torx was spelt with an X at the time. They changed it to KS eventually. And it was released on a couple of palm top style Nokia phones, uh, one of which was end of line by the time they released the software. But I got one second hand and this was 2002. And it was the Nokia 90, Communicator 9110. And um, the English synthesizer on it was so bad that it could, only knew a very few words and it spelt all the other ones. Uh, but it was the first time I could read text messages, SMS messages from a phone. There was Nokia PC Suite, which you could use. Uh, and you could have your Nokia phone operate as a modem as well. When I was living abroad, I had my Nokia, I think it was a 6110 back then, and it's 14.4K modem having me, having me providing me with internet uh, for two months. But I got this uh, communicator, and it was amazing. Uh, much more revolutionary in my, uh, from my point of view than the iPhone and, and smartphones were because they were evolutionary albeit they can do more having a talking mobile phone was a revolutionary thing and that was definitely nokia but then i got the the 6600 which you mentioned uh had that phone for a while the 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 nokia the one that rivaled the iphone i think that was the n97 wasn't it um that uh yeah i I didn't Oh, 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 yeah. So, so, so that, yeah. uh, but, but they, 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 they evolved that. 
because the communicator series was boo they had those, some of those before the iphone anyway uh and then yeah they evolved those um yeah and then as you say they went to microsoft they did block their own copybook though because just as they um they had some windows uh, um some phones running on um uh windows phone but then <laughs> They were sold to Microsoft and they released an Android phone while Microsoft owned them, which Microsoft weren't very happy about. Uh, so whether that <laughs> started the beginning of the end, I don't know. But then, as you say, the brand was sold to HMD and we'll, we'll go. Did we all have Nokia phones? Sally, did you have one? Well, of course. I've started with N70. It was also uh, coming with uh, Symbian Series 2. Did I say 62? Well, mm-hmm. I liked it. It was a really good phone with a um, really nice speaker on the top. <laughs> yeah, that's all I know. The dual cameras. I think it's one of the very first phones coming with dual cameras. Like one Karine, in the back and then the front. Karine, were you, were you a Nokia girl? Of course. I started in 2010 uh, with the E52. Uh, you know the days of the phone that will that will have a battery that will last for um, seven days. So yeah, those those phones, those days, and uh, you know th- th- those days are like you feel nostalgia to those days sometimes. Um, yeah, they 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 were sort of special. Nokia did a nice job in in like uh, creating phones that were not similar to each other, like the phones that we have now. Uh, they they had uh, some some like thinking when they were doing the phone they were trying to do something and uh you know the the phones were really durable you you, you like you, your phone will fall your phone will fall down you will take it the battery uh the, the cover everything and then you put it back and it would work so yeah those were really durable and of course they would work with cracked screens as well because you didn't need the screen to operate it if you couldn't see it uh, I have many a Nokia with a cracked screen. If you if you are able to crack the screen, actually, in the first place, because they were really some. Yeah, a, a mugger and I had a dispute as to who owned my phone, and we we concluded that I did. But unfortunately, the, the phone got smashed in the process as we were as we were arguing about whose phone it was. Uh, I think that was a that was a thirty two ten. I think. Uh, it went for quite a long time after its screen got broken in the in in the scuffle. John, what about you? I'm the outlier here, so I have owned probably five Nokia's phones, and none of them are Symbian or Android. They were all Windows phones. So a few I can think of that I had were the 1020, uh, the 1520. Um. Uh, yeah, and the 1320 and a couple of others that I don't remember. But the 1020 was, it had a 41 megapixel camera, which at the time was crazy. I think the highest one on a, on a phone was uh, 12 megapixels at the time. And that thing had the biggest camera bump. It was ridiculous. I do have a Windows phone Nokia kicking around somewhere. I can't remember what, what it was, but it cost me £50. Pounds. And I thought I would buy it to see what Windows Phone was like. Um, I remember that activating speech on it was kind of annoying and didn't work in the way it was supposed to. I don't know what model it was, though. I might see if I can resurrect it and find out. But uh, it was an interesting, interesting concept. Did you like Windows Phone? I did. So was yours Windows Mobile, like, before 7, or was it Windows no, Phone? No, like, later. From 7. Windows okay. Phone. Yeah, that's what all mine were Windows phones. Yeah. Yeah, I did yeah, like no, them. I, I didn't depend on, I had a lot more vision back then. I didn't depend on screen reader as much. So it did have narrator, but, you know, if it if it didn't work perfectly, it wasn't the end of the world for me. Like, it also had magnification. It had dark theme and a lot of other accessibility settings that I used. So accessibility wasn't great on them, but it was there. Yeah, you could certainly do like the core the core things. You could send messages. I'm pretty sure email worked. Uh, I vaguely remember starting it involved a hardware and software button at the same time. I can't quite remember how that worked, but I couldn't do it, and I had to get someone else to do it. Yeah, um, that's very possible. Yeah, uh, but I might I might try to get out at least to work out what phone it was. 
So my first Nokia phone, the double six double zero, that was the tank. And really, was. if anyone, yeah, if anyone listens to my Android journey, I mentioned that. And my first touch screen phone, when I came across touch screen, was my friend's Nokia C five or C six. So it had this slidable touch screen that was like on the top, and it had this QWERTY keyboard at the bottom. And those are the best phones. I just saw that phone, and I wanted to buy the phone. Now in India. the talks talk back i mean not talks but talk back no not talk back talks was working only on very expensive nokia phones and talks itself was expensive but also in india we used to come up with lots of hacks and tricks to get free internet from our service provider because that time they used to use something called wap so that was really some fantastic those i i really remember those days i should be having a nokia n79 Somewhere in my house, I don't know. I need to resurrect it. And I remember when KNFB Reader. I didn't buy it, um, but KNFB Reader. I think when it first came out, they shipped it on a Nokia N eighty two, and charged something improbably high, like over a thousand dollars. And I guess you didn't have anything like that, so that's kind of fair enough. But if you think now that you can get Lookout and Seeing AI and Envision for free, it's crazy, really. But yeah, you're right. Talks. I think here it was 150 pounds. Uh, I can't remember if you had to pay to move your license. You certainly had to move your license, though. Uh, Alat Jishuo. And I remember I, I got the um, the N97, which I think predated the C5. It it was a touchscreen phone, but no QWERTY. And I thought I would try and get away with installing my non-touchscreen enabled version of talks i think it was because their touchscreen support wasn't out yet and that did not go well that did not work uh so the the n97 which was quite a good phone at the time 2009 so iphones were out but N- n97 was it was a credible phone back then um uh but yeah my my, my touchscreen journey with nokia in part because i had the wrong version of talks was very very brief Until I got the Windows Phone one, and uh, as, as John said, used used Narrator. And I remember that day no. when we could use internet with the uh, Nokia PC Suite using One Touch Access. That is the name mm-hmm. of the option. With Mobile Speak, there were no two versions. The the, the versions weren't separate. Uh, you had the uh, same Mobile Speak you could use on a phone or or non non touch phone because I had also the C6. Uh, which uh, was a touch screen and uh, you slide it to have a qwerty keyboard and i used mobile speak and it was actually um with better modes and with better customizations if you compare it to talkback at that time and it used the same gestures that you know now the one finger gestures of talkback the angular ones yeah to be fair i can't remember if talks had two versions or just their touch screen support wasn't out yet it, it could have been either uh but either way i uh i i decided either to press ahead without it or to try and you know decide i didn't want to pay the port what what do you know whatever the thing was uh and it it didn't end well <laughs> <laughs> no there were not two versions out but the touch screen support was not out at in the earlier versions of talk yeah but it was amazing i mean it was the first time i got that in 2002 on on the old Nokia communicator that I had to buy from a market because Nokia didn't have them anymore and no network network had them I, I was at university or college at the time and the only mode of communication anyone used was SMS so you didn't have to plug your phone into your laptop to get Nokia PC suite to read them anymore you could just do it on device absolutely revolutionary <laughs> 